Shabbat Shalom. In our double Torah portion this week, Acharei Mot Kedoshim, which contains the Holiness Code, there are so many important commandments that it can feel impossible to know which words to focus on. There are also deeply problematic passages that give us pause and that necessitate wrestling with and reinterpreting the text in light of our contemporary values. This year, however, it seems obvious to focus on the two commandments, love your neighbor as yourself and love the stranger as yourself. These two verses do not appear together and yet they are deeply and obviously connected. There are endless writings and teachings on the concept of ve'ahafta l'reacha kamocha, loving your neighbor as yourself. We know it to be a core statement of Jewish imperative. And yet it is the second exhortation, loving the stranger, that is repeated 36 times in the Torah. Rabbi Rick Jacobs, president of the Union for Reform Judaism, teaches that the Torah commands us to love in three different ways. Love God, love your neighbor, and love the stranger. What is it about this third commandment that needs so much reinforcement, he asks. There's something challenging about loving someone you don't know. It can be difficult to relate to the stranger. Loving the stranger isn't as intuitive as loving your neighbor, who you know and with whom you share commonalities. Rabbi Jacobs points out that the passage in our Parsha that discusses love for the stranger urges us to push past the discomfort that we may feel toward the stranger by easing us into it step by step. First, we shall not wrong them. Then we are told, the stranger shall be to us as one of our citizens. In other words, we must grant them equal treatment. And finally, we must love the stranger as ourselves. Over these past five weeks, we in South Africa and indeed people all over the world have taken the two concepts of loving our neighbor and loving the stranger to new and radical heights. Never before in our lives, perhaps, has the inseparable nature of these commandments been more clear. The stranger is our neighbor, our brethren, our kin. We're all connected. We're all one global community. And yet, we must also remember that extending love to our neighbors and to the strangers among us and beyond does not stop at limiting our own personal freedoms for the sake of the collective good. We must also make sure that our neighbors and that the vulnerable in our community are able to access food, water, and shelter, and that their basic human rights are protected. We can't just sit at home and say we've done our part. It's actually not enough. As we phase into the next part of our lockdown and post-lockdown experience, we must start to think beyond our own homes and ensure that the continued care of all is at hand. Shabbat Shalom.